Hello, songwriters. Welcome to another Hot Seat Review. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. Uh, we got Robert Huffman. Something's wrong with my radio. Um, and it's going to be lovely. I really have a lot to say about this one. Um, so, Robert, thank you so much for, for allowing me to do this with your song. I really appreciate it. Um, and let's jump into it. Something's wrong with my radio. Heaven's on the fire, just don't look at the sky. Everybody's skating on thin ice. My hands started shaking and birds taking flight. I should have seen it coming, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Yeah, first, I just, I love the hoppiness of the chords. Um, some people don't like using a lot of chords. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But uh, I love how this sounds, you know, it just sounds so flawless and smooth with those chords. Lovely. Dogs are barking crazy, no man ain't around. Chances going up all over this town. They made up their minds and they're ready to fight. Yeah, with your voice, um, love your voice. It's almost comparable to like, um, if I was to put like some kind of imagery to it, it would be like a pastel color. That's what I, I want to compare your voice to, um, which is, it's nice. It, it's like very soft. It's very, um, it's very easy to listen to. The only thing I would say about that is I would love to hear that a little bit more richer, a little bit more, uh, a little coming through a little bit more. And how we can do that, Robert, is just by using your stomach to support your voice. Okay, so you want to breathe with your belly. Okay, which means that you're activating those muscles in your tummy. You're activating those di that diaphragm um, and supporting your voice so that whatever t natural tone you have, can really come through really beautifully. Um, you can actually use your guitar as sort of a reminder to use your belly to breathe. So if you sort of see your guitar, you know, bouncing up and down on your tummy, that's a good sign. Um, and you can almost sort of press your guitar into your stomach to sort of simulate that support as well. Um, yeah, so very cool. I'm trying to keep Staring in my ears I got tears in my eyes I can't stay indoors Can't go outside I'm trying to keep from wrenching With all my might Should have seen it coming Something ain't right I see it on the cable I hear it on my phone Is something starting up Or is it coming yeah cool lyrics too um it does make me it does make me think you know, it does make me wonder, um, which is good, which is what lyrics should do. So right now I'm thinking, okay, he's got like this, he's like, paint, he's like beautifully painting this picture of this sort of apocalyptic situation. Everybody's going crazy. You know, nothing feels comfortable or settled. Um, 
and he does a great job of describing these robert you do a great job of describing these beautifully and painting a picture for us and then you sort of throw in something's wrong with my radio <laughs> which is like you know a bit trivial in comparison to all of the other stuff that's going on so you think okay why why did robert put that in there what i have come to the conclusion of and and robert please just let me know if this is right or 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 wrong or if you had a sort of different mind, thing in mind which is what i love about songwriting and lyrics is because it's subjective right so what i got from this is like when you turn on your radio and you hear all this stuff going on you hear all of this craziness you hear all of that well robert's saying oh well there's something wrong with my there must be something wrong with the radio because what's coming out of it isn't what i you know like isn't what exactly i want to hear which is a very fun way of putting that you know i love that so very cool Nice job, Robert. Okay, let's uh, get to the good stuff. Okay. Something's wrong. Um, so I did listen to this a few times. I did go over this a few times. I did uh, spend some time on this. So, so I really wanted to take the opportunity at this point to talk about tropes. So what exactly is a trope? Well, a trope is sort of an idea that can repeat itself across genres and sort of, um, it's just sort of a common theme that sort of repeats itself and repeats itself. And it's hard to actually tell where the original idea came from. Um, a good example in film is when you're, when you're watching a particular sad part of the movie and it's raining and somebody comes along in a car and, and splashes this person with a huge, with a huge puddle. Um, you see that multiple times playing out in multiple different movies across multiple different genres. And the same thing can happen in music as well with your chords, with your melodies, with your rhythms, with your lyrics, with any sort of aspect that comes. Uh, yeah, so I sort of want to preface by saying a lot of people think that tropes are bad. And I just want to sort of, I just want to say that's false. Tropes aren't bad. But analyzing them can be particularly helpful for the songwriting process, because once you do, you can make an educated decision on how far into that trope you want to lean or how far you want to stay away from that trope. So um, I also want to say that nobody is safe from this. OK, nobody, including myself. And I don't want this to be an opportunity to bash somebody else's art that they really put some hard work into. Um, but I do want to take this opportunity for education because that is what this group is really all about for me. Um, I want to give you guys as much education as possible with the songwriting process um, because it's all stuff that I went through and it's stuff that I'm still going through. Um, but Robert, I wanted to sort of talk about this song because it's a good example and here's why. So I want to show you two songs that I found that are have, they're not the same melody, but they're very similar. Um, they are part of the same trope. Okay. Okay. So here's Robert's, Robert's melody. 
Heaven's on fire, just don't look at the sky. Everybody's skating on thin ice. Okay, so that's uh, in the key of B, it seems. Oops. So that's just using B, C sharp, and E. Yeah. So that would be the the one, the two, and the four. Okay. Um, now check out these ideas. So this given, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, this is a song made in 2022. Okay. So, um, this is sort of another example by the sheepdogs of this sort of similar trope. So it's not the same. It's in a different key. Uh, the the sheepdogs is in the key of D. Same thing though. Uh, first interval, second interval, and the fourth interval of the key of D. Oops. And then this is the other song that I found. And I just want to listen to Roberts here. Heaven's on fire, just don't look at the sky. Everybody's skating on thin ice. So, different melodies using the same sort of combination of notes, which is the first degree, the second degree, and the fourth degree. This particular song is in the key of uh, A. Okay. Yeah, and I couldn't find it, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that this comes from sort of big band era, this melody, um, or this sort of trope, um, or maybe even ragtime. I, I like, I'm just sort of, I couldn't find anything. Uh, I, I was only made, I only managed to find these two songs, um, but it is something that exists across, um, like it is something that we've heard sort of before. But what Robert has done here is, um, and what what all three of the artists have done the sheepdogs uh robert and um betty i is the name of that third artist there um what they've all done here is they've taken this motif they've taken this trope and they've sort of switched it up in their own way they've changed parts of it changed parts of the rhythm changed parts of the key changed even the notes uh, order uh, and made it their own original thing. And that's a very cool thing to be able to do. Um, so, yeah, we shouldn't think of tropes as bad things. They are good things because they can be building blocks. Um, <laughs> now, um, I think it is really valuable for all of us as songwriters to really be thoughtful about the ideas of tropes um, because we want to be educated about our decisions, right? We want to say, okay, I am sort of stepping into this trope because I want to step in this trope and I know it's, I know it exists. 
or I want to sort of step away as far as I can from this trope by changing the melody, changing the rhythm. Instead of it having to be sort of a taboo idea for songwriters. Um, so it should also be mentioned too that um, chord progressions, they are safe legally speaking. They're safe. So you can take somebody else's chord progression, use it for your own song, and that's actually called a contrafact. Um, that's actually a thing. Legally speaking, that is totally on the on the board. Um, now, for melody, if uh, five to nine of the notes and the rhythms are are same, that is considered plagiarism. So it works out to be about two bars. If two bars of the melody is the same, <laughs> um, that is considered plagiarism. So legally speaking, I just wanted to note that as well. So I hope you I hope you all got some value out of that. Um, but thank you so much, Robert, again, for allowing me to review your song. This was a lot of fun. Um, and I can't wait to hear what else you've got. Now, for all of you, if you want to find out how exactly I took Robert's melody and found some songs on the internet that sort of matched the melody so that you can start implementing that in your own songwriting process. Leave a, leave a comment below with the phrase, show me, and I will send you a direct message with a video sort of explaining how I did that. All right. But thank you, everybody. Stay creative. Love you.